So, what's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to a very special episode of, uh, well, this is the only one I've ever done of this series because it's <laughs> how to become a crucible god with the crucible god himself. It's Sir Demetrius. Welcome to the channel, buddy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Dude, not a lot. I'm excited because I have a bunch of questions for you. I don't know, crucible topics off the top of my head of how to improve people's games kind of in all areas. Question number one for you is, in your opinion, what are like the top one or two things that like your average player, let's say someone who gets like a 1.0 KD on average, what do they focus on to improve their game? The biggest thing I think um, with Destiny, it's like a lot, like when people come over from Call of Duty, they, they have like a lot of problems, uh, mainly because the radar, the radar system is like, like if when I'm spawning up, I'm pretty sure there's videos on the internet of like other, I, I think his name was Scamp. He used to play a lot. You, you see their eyes and they're constantly flickering, just looking at the radar because half the time you really don't need to be looking at your screen, especially off spawn um, just making sure you pay attention to your radar a ton and then especially now like in 1.0 when there's a lot of blink going around a, a lot of stuff was like stationary people were on the ground of, co of course they're like blinking around but shotgun battles last word battles um, a lot of that takes place midair so if you're if you're only looking at the ground um, you're gonna have a lot of uh, trouble um, obviously that relates to radar in the sense that you have to know when people are above and below you like if someone is floating above a doorway look at your radar make sure that they're um, or you can kind of find out where they are and then for, for staying off the radar a lot a lot of people have asked me about this in videos but the reason that I slide around so much is that you keep the constant pace it's not like you're going really that much faster than you would be if you're running um, but you stay off the radar when you're sliding oh, so okay. basically basically if you're sliding around all the time it's like crouching half the time because obviously like when you crouch the radar flickers a lot but if you're sliding around um, you're gonna be off the radar like half the game Wow okay that's interesting okay so you think the biggest thing for like your average player is get really good with the radar radar yeah radar gun skill will take you like a certain place but it's all about like radar moving moving around movement midair that whole sort of thing okay let's say they focus on that for like a week or two and let's say they master the radar game and they're really aware of where people are and let's say they're now a good player what do you think is like the biggest one or two things that like a good player should focus on to become a great player? It seems like, I don't know if there's really like a, a way to explain this, but I've seen like a lot of people, there's really good players in 1.0 that took, you know, a year long break and they come back and you can really see it like how they play. Um, it, it's kind of like resemblance to how, or like a resemblance, I guess, how to, how a lot of people play in Destiny, but it's it's basically people play like really awkward. You don't see them sprinting, a lot, uh, sprinting around a lot. You don't see them sliding. They're just kind of like really stationary and they, they're not aiming. They're gun in a lot they're just kind of walking around um, not really entirely aware of what's going on and obviously like by by that stage you're pretty good you know you know the whole radar system but making sure you're mobile and not staying in one spot once you get faster and you can get kind of better at that and what I see a lot uh, with snipers is anyone can hard scope pretty much especially with you know how much aim assist is in destiny and and for trials um, you're probably gonna end up having to hard scope because of how other people play but um, and pretty much everything else not hard scoping is really really important because if if you're playing especially with skill-based matchmaking let's just say we're assuming you're a good player if you know you're sliding around a corner let's just say you're a great player right you're sliding around a corner you have a sniper out if someone else is just sitting there crouching or sitting there hard scoping most of the time it's really really easy to hit them and th this happened in like sweaties a lot where um, I used to hard scope a lot and I used to lane stuff where I wasn't really moving around a lot and then what would happen is there's certain players that get really fast with snipers and if you're hard scoping a lane and someone slides around the corner with a sniper I know people are like really impressed by slide snipes but but it's it's a lot easier for the person sliding around the corner to snipe you while you're just sitting there sitting still than it is for you to snipe them you have to obviously like account that they're they're sliding down and you have to move your reticle to like it's it's basically like where their kneecaps would be but instead because they're sliding their heads there slide sniping uh slide shotgunning i guess obviously shotgunning is kind of hard um people think you have to play on like a, a 10 sensitivity but a lot of people you can just get away with four or five if you're playing on 10 a lot of times you can get kind of lost and you don't really know exactly where everyone is because you're spinning around the whole time but just just getting getting you know kind of accustomed and, and getting comfortable with one set sensitivity for shotgunning and one for sniping and making sure they're not too far apart i play on a three for sniping and a four for shotgunning generally okay and so in summary of that question uh bringing their overall game speed up like so that they're really fast paced it helps them go from good to great yeah and, and not even to the point where you're sprinting at people because playing fast and playing stupid is like two different things like you can you can just run at someone all you want but that's that's not what playing fast is it's making sure like when you have a sniper out you switch to your sniper really quick you check a lane and then you go and then you have your primary out again just making sure like when you stay in one spot for too long um especially in trials you're gonna get called out and just making sure you're moving around a lot but also not to the point where you're you're moving so fast to the point where you don't know what's going on around you um okay so let's talk about
about shotgunning specifically for a second. What are the most common mistakes you see like an average shotgunner making? For for when you're shotgunning defensively, a lot of people will just sit around a corner, not not necessarily in a corner, but sitting in a spot where they're just stationary. And basically how it works, if someone's sliding at you and you're standing still, it's kind of the same thing as sniping, but shotgunning. Um, but if, if you're standing still, and obviously there's like a certain range in which shotguns can kill, uh, you know, like if you have two different shotguns, um, same exact, you know, shotgun, same exact range, everything, the person sliding at you is going to know exactly right when to shoot because they're, they're moving at you, you're moving still. So you have to, yeah, you'd have to calculate them coming at you and exactly when to shoot. But when they're, when they're coming at you, if you shoot too early as a defensive shotgunner, you're screwed. But if he shoots too early, he can follow up with a melee or whatever he wants. A lot of people, like, um, they underestimate uh, defensive shotgunning and how that plays into... Like, a big part of shotgunning now is, is mid-air stuff. Double jump on Blade Dancer is super good. If you know someone's coming around a corner, if you can just jump around a doorway, especially like in Cauldron with the doors, if you know someone's going to be coming through, just float above the doorway. And a lot of times, they're not even going to see you. So defensive shotgunning, making sure you're in the air a lot works, especially since you know, Blink got nerfed. Ever since then, sniping and shotgunning have been a lot more about playing with the air more, like using air, like being in midair for cover, confusing people. I did a, I did a 1v2 doubles game on a cauldron where I had 47 kills. A lot of that is baiting one person with a primary and then floating above a doorway with a shotgun because if someone can't see you, then the shotgun fight is pretty much like no contest. Could you go maybe a little bit more specifically into kind of the difference between in defensive and offensive shotgunning and maybe when to switch between the two well, well you're gonna be doing like both in different situations it's not like you're one or the other usually if if you know someone's weak around a corner if you're no if you know they're within shotgun range and you you're, you know maybe you're like bottom train on exodus blue then you're gonna be offensive shotgunning because if in, in an enclosed space where there's nowhere for you to run when when someone is offensive shotgunning against you and pushing you it's a lot easier for them to shotgun you especially with like latency and stuff where sometimes one person will just see you before they do making sure you're that person that sees them first by pushing them is really important and then defensive shotgunning catching them off guard if you know they're sprinting through a zone being able to to shotgun them or float above a doorway a lot of it has to do uh, with jumping and sliding with shotguns okay cool and uh switching over to sniping in the same scenario what's the biggest mistakes that you see like an average sniper making you already touched on this a bit i guess going further into that if if i'm sliding around a corner you're not going to kill anyone if you're if you're aiming at toe height or or 10 feet above where people are. It's like the, the same basic thing where we're making sure you know where head height is, making sure you know where head height will be if someone is crouching. Like if you know someone's going to have a primary out, don't challenge them with a sniper. And if someone is going to just keep primarying you, then just pull out whatever primary you have. And at that point, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fair engagement, but it's really hard. It's really, really hard to snipe pulse rifles, auto rifles, scout rifles. And if you try to primary your sniper, um, I made a video about it. I called it sniper syndrome. I guess this would would be like the more advanced portion of the of the sniping thing but making sure you don't primary your sniper and once you hit like an insane sniper clip it, you have a tendency to want to keep on only trying to snipe people when they're like a foot in front of you if you can get like disciplined enough i guess to, to just want to use your primary more um you're gonna find yourself having a lot more success because you snipe in the situations where you need to snipe but in pretty much everything else you're gonna put yourself on the same playing field as other players because if someone if someone has like a super good scout rifle you're pretty much screwed when you're sniping against them making sure if you know there's different uh, loadouts other people are running that you run something that's compatible with that if someone is running you know a mida shotgun last word sniper is really not going to do much for you at all so just being like immediately aware uh when someone's primarying you down that you need to put the sniper away very quickly and not lose that fight and, and not even specifically for that fight because obviously the, the game is more than one death but recognizing if you if you start missing a ton of snipes don't just keep going for them just switch to a primary primary is one thing that i found will never fail you if you can outgun someone then you can outgun them there's there's nothing to do with um someone camping really or or, or stuff like that i in general i found if i slide into a gunfight around a corner usually you're going to be the one uh, with an advantage give me an example of a small thing that you've changed that's made a big improvement in your game baiting shotgunners is a huge thing in tournaments and stuff if you don't know how to bait shotgunners when you're last word sniping you're going to get demolished every time and i, I feel like this is actually 
uh, I guess noteworthy advice because of private matches coming out now. If you if you can't bait shotgunners, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically like a common example which actually happened a lot yesterday when I was playing. If you can get someone weak, don't don't always just run around the corner. Like I remember I was in room one, if you know where that is on uh, Anomaly. Um, basically, I was sitting in one of those rooms. Someone was on B, like the top table, and I got three last word shots on them. And what you can do is use because everyone exploits the radar at like a higher level of play. They use their radar for pretty much everything. Like how I mentioned, you use your radar for defensive shotgunning and all that. And if you know you're really weak and you know someone, you're like, oh, I'm really weak. Someone's obviously gonna push me with their last word, trying to get one more shot off to kill me. A lot of times, and this happened to me against really good uh, like War Bulletproof. He, he's really good at baiting players. Basically, you just slide at them to the point where you're not exposed, and then you just backpedal. And what would happen is, it's really funny to watch because it works so well, is that you get them weak, you slide near them to the point where they can't see you at all, and, and obviously you're, you're not going to, like if someone's right in front of you and they're weak, you don't just slide at them and then backpedal. Um, but if, you, if they're in a situation where you're zone, or they're kind of zoned in an area and you have to pass through some choke point, whether it be like a doorway, opening, uh, closing door, whatever it may be, if you have to go through one little tiny spot where they can shock on you, all you have to do is slide near the opening of that spot, backpedal, and then they'll just float out into the into the open. They're expecting you to run through, so they're floating above the doorway to shotgun, and then once they're above the doorway, they just float down and you can kill them. Baiting is basically a combination of, of uh, manipulating radar and, and backpedaling a lot. Cool, let's talk for a moment scuff and control freaks. Now, do you use either, and what's your honest opinion? Do you think they actually help improve someone's game? Um, I use both. Um, the main thing, the, the main selling point or, or how you'd prove that they're actually useful to someone, you can give them the whole it increases the range of motion thing, which it does, and technically, yes, it should make you more accurate, but the main thing for me, if you have a PS4 controller and you don't have any sort of like analog stick covers, after like four or five months, you know how they completely rot out and it's just plastic the main thing about using control freaks for me is I've been using the same controller for over a year because all, all your controllers if you have control freaks on them even if you want to buy just the really short ones they're never gonna get worn down uh, which ones do I use um, I use the vortex ones okay cool and and uh, talking about scuffs like the paddles on the back how much of an improvement do you think that would make to someone's game there's nothing you can't or you can do with a scuff that you can't do with the normal controller it makes it easier if you're using a scuff and it makes it like a lot more comfortable like I mentioned there's button assignments you can play claw um, you can claw in certain situations uh, like overall it's gonna help you um, mainly if you're shotgunning I honestly don't think it it makes that big of a difference if you're uh, if you're sniping but it definitely if you're shotgunning especially in this meta like in 1.0 when everything was blink shotgun it really didn't matter that much um, but now now so more th than ever when you know um, a lot of it is floating above doorways, double jumping at a certain time, I'd out shotgun someone or out primary someone. They're definitely useful now, but there's not really anything you can do on a scuff that you can't do with a stock controller. In your opinion, how can someone improve their overall sniper game the fastest? Finding a sensitivity where you're actually comfortable at. Like a lot of people will like a lot of times if they get killed a ton, they like switch their sensitivity around like super fast. They'll go from like like a six to a four and then oh no, six is better again and they go six and then that's not fast enough so they go to seven and they're back to four it's just like really messy and you, you can't do well when you're switching sensitivities all the time especially when it comes to sniping because it's either going to feel way too fast or way too slow depending on what you're using so like a lot of like kj hovey i'm pretty sure has used the same exact sensitivity since like beta yep three from day one yeah yeah just making sure you're consistent with like uh, sensitivity play style uh subclasses all that sort of stuff is there any techniques that you use to to hit shots more consistently or is there a way that you specifically practice to hit shots more consistently I, I there's not really like practice as much but if you use short gaze and like obviously there's gonna be more aim assist your shot can get like really jerky sometimes where you never have any snipes that are lined up like they're always like little twitch or little drag scopes but I really like using ambush and for me ambush it reminds me of, of what sniping was when destiny was like in vanilla where I feel like it, it was the hardest to snipe but it also rewarded the best aim like it kind of teaches you not to drag scope or not not you I mean obviously you drag scope but not like to the point where you're, you're not in control of what's going on and a lot of my a lot of my ambush kills are drag scopes but at the same time um, I notice my aim not wavering as much like when I'm like playing you know sweaties or whatever when I'm using my my like quick draw you know short gaze herb benevolence a lot of my shots are really twitchy and like drag scopes and it looks really messy but when I play with ambush 
and I started playing with ambush for like a week or so and and today when I played my sniper shot was really really good is that your aim is really really accurate and you don't drag your scope much at all um, so if you want to use ambush to practice and it, it's gonna feel really weird at first because none of your I guess your kind of messy shots are gonna hit but once you get really used to it it's actually really really nice to use ambush in your opinion what are like the ingredients of a great shotgunner not not shotgunning all the time obviously using your primary um, the, the the biggest thing for me is players who don't fall for the bait <laughs> there's there's you know reaction time and, and high sensitivity which is gonna help you with uh, and obviously like spatial awareness without shotgunning other shotgunners as far as like making sure you're not getting killed by snipers it's that's where that's where the, the true test is for me because when I'm like I used to shotgun a lot in sweaties or whatever and just most recently I've kind of gone back to sniping and they're two different play styles so it's hard to kind of switch between the two the hardest people for me to play against aren't people that can out shotgun other people it's it's people that know not to get baited they know they know what a bait looks like when someone gets you weak and tries to slide around the corner and you just float up there and, and you're you're basically dead meat knowing how to slide around corners uh, with your primary is really really huge when playing against snipers because if you just kind of wander around the corner at head level it makes it really really easy for people to shoot you it helps a lot if you were a sniper in the past or you know sniping really well but staying out of sniper lanes as a whole which, which kind of sounds broad but it's actually possible um, just make it and, and you can stay within sniper lanes and, and close to them but making sure you don't just randomly sprint uh, you know, into a huge lane where it's easy to get hard scoped from is definitely like really hard to play against. Because when you're when you're playing against a last word sniper or something in a in a quote unquote competitive game, just make it like so there's some games where I play against people like uh, you know thorn shockers where I don't even see them like with my sniper out, and those are the hardest players to play against. So. It's more than just being able to shotgun, it's knowing like a balance between the two, um, not falling for bait, just that whole sort of thing. And let's talk about snipers. What are your go-to perks on a sniper? Rifled, perfect balance, snapshot, quick draw, outlaw, hidden hand, eye of the storm, hot swap. And if you had to choose between quick draw and snapshot, which is kind of your preferred and why? Quick draw is statistically better in every, in every way, shape, and form because the uh, snapshot, the snapshot nerf, didn't affect quick draw at all and what quick draw does which not a lot of people knew, knew about is it gives you snapshot and it gives you single point sling so there's no sacrifice at all uh, from having quick draw on you switch to the weapon faster and you aim in faster than you would with snapshot so snapshot is fine now it's decent um, but especially after the nerf like even before the nerf a, a lot of people if you could get quick draw they'd prefer quick draw over snapshot um, but especially now, quick draw is definitely like the better perk. Finishing off with shotguns, what are your must-have perks on a shotgun? Rifled or reinforced, obviously for range. We've kind of been messing around with it, and rangefinder doesn't really seem to do that much, which which is debatable. Like for some reason, I feel like it still snipes more when it has rangefinder. If you're rerolling a, a year one shotgun, especially uh, getting aggressive ballistics combined with knee pads and uh, close in or personal or crowd control is really good. Um, in general, all shotguns with crowd control are really, really nice because after you get that first kill, it's really easy um, to get the second kill. But rangefinder, final round, luck in the chamber, crowd control, that whole sort of thing is, is really nice. Battle runner too. Battle runner's fun. Okay, well, um, dude, I hope, uh, God, I hope people have gotten at least some kind of gold nugget out of this. I know I'm taking away a whole bunch of wisdom. So, dude, thank you so much for uh, your time and your brains. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this sneaky episode of How to Become a Crucible God. Please do me a huge favor and check out certain Demetrius. He is an effing god at the Crucible. You saw the footage that was on screen. That was him playing. He's insane. His YouTube is Sir Demetrius. That link is in the description and also on screen right now. He also does live streams um, at twitch.tv slash Sir Demetrius YT. And also check him out on Twitter at Sir Demetrius. He is a great guy. I was really stoked that he uh, wanted to come on and um, give you guys and me a bit of wisdom. So please go and subscribe to him. Leave him some comments. Tell him that the Jez sent you and I would appreciate it. You're super cute. I'm the Jez. God bless. Thank you for tuning in.